I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to free your mind, Neo. But I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through it. All praise to Yahoo Elohim. What up, y'all? It's your boy Pacway K. Perez, y'all from the Rumble Room. And for today's POV, POV 2, we'll be dealing with repentance and the law. Now, oftentimes when we're dialoguing with Christians, the topics of sin, righteousness, and repentance come up. If you haven't already, now's a good time to review POV 1, which deals with the notions of sin, righteousness, blessings, and curses. The principles of repentance in the law here in POV 2 will be building off of the principles already established from POV 1, the notions of sin, righteousness, blessings, and curses. Now, why are the topics of repentance and the law important? Oftentimes, when we're dialoguing with Christians, we'll hear questions like, we don't have to follow the law. Wasn't that done away with when Christ died on the cross? Or, as long as we repent of our sins, aren't we forgiven? Or, aren't we justified by grace and not works of the law? Keep these questions in mind because by the end of POV 2, we'll have some answers. Now keep in mind that the point of the POV is to follow my point of view as I critically read the scriptures. And together, we'll turn the scriptures around and view them from different angles in order to extract as much truth as we can from each verse. Today we'll be exploring some passages from the Gospels of Luke, Matthew, John, the book of the prophet Ezekiel, and the Psalms. Let's see what we can find. Now the first passage we'll be looking at is Luke chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. And what we have at this point in scripture is Levi, who is the Messiah's new recruit and the disciples. And he has uh, decided to throw a feast or a party in his house with the disciples and some fellow tax collectors. And it reads, And after these things he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he left, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made a great feast in his house, and there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. Verse 30, But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against the disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Verse 31, And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Verse 32, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, in order to really unlock the wisdom of this passage, we need to be able to define the terms righteousness, sinners, and repentance. Now, if you recall from POV 1, we established righteousness from the precept Deuteronomy 6.25 that reads, and it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he hath commanded us. So righteousness is following the Sinai covenant law. Now, if we transpose that verse by taking the term righteousness and replacing it with sin, we can find out what sin is. We'll define sin. And it would read, and it shall be our sin if we do not observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. Now this transposition of Deuteronomy 6.25, replacing the word righteousness with sin, should jive with 1 John 3.4, which also defines sin. And it reads, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is transgression of the law. Now, if we transpose 1 John 3, 4, replacing the word sin with righteousness and taking the elements and finding their opposites, it should logically jive with the definition of righteousness in Deuteronomy 6, 25. And it would read, Whosoever committeth righteousness obeys also the law. For righteousness is obedience to the law. And this jives with the psalmist's words in Psalm 119, reading, Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. 
Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Verse 7. I will praise thee with the uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. But then in verse 9, we see a very interesting verse that has to do with repentance and cleansing one's way. It reads, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. His word, of course, meaning the law. Now, at this point in the dialogue, a Christian might ask, wasn't the law done away with? But if we are to look to the Messiah and what he taught, we find that he preached repentance unto the law. Just as the psalmist had instructed in Psalm chapter 119, verse 9. If we turn to Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, we see that after Christ comes from his wilderness experience, being tempted by the adversary, he preaches repentance. It says in Matthew 4, 17, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, if you look in John chapter 8, verse 11, we see the Messiah tell the woman who he saved from being stoned, go and sin no more. So what we have here is the Messiah spurring the woman on to repentance. Repentance being following the law, following a life of righteousness. Let's turn to the book of Ezekiel for further clarification on what repentance is. Now, in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, we'll read from verses 21 to verse 32. It reads, But if the wicked will turn from all his sins that he hath committed and keep all my statutes and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. He shall not die. All his transgressions that he hath committed, they shall not be mentioned unto him. In his righteousness that he hath done, he shall live. Verse 23. Have I any pleasure at all that the wicked should die, saith the Lord God, and not that he should return from his ways and live? Verse 24. But when the righteous turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and doth according to all the abominations that the wicked man doth, Shall he live? All his righteousness that he hath done shall not be mentioned, and his trespass that he hath trespassed, and in his sin that he hath sinned, in them shall he die. Verse 25. Yet ye say, The way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O Israel, is not my way equal? Are not yours are not your ways unequal? Verse 26. When a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Verse 27. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed and doth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Verse 28. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Verse 29, Yet saith the house of Israel, The way of the Lord is not equal. O house of Israel, are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Verse 30, Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart, a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord God. 
Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Now, as you can see in Ezekiel chapter 18, the Most High by his prophet Ezekiel makes the definition of repentance crystal clear. We see the same in Ezekiel 33, verse 10 through 16. It reads, Therefore, O son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Verse 11, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. Verse 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live if he trust his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. So as we can see from our scriptural passages here, that repentance is defined by turning from sin, which is transgression of the law, back to righteousness, which is obedience to the law. When the Messiah preached repentance, he was spurring the nation of Israel back unto the Sinai covenant law. So when a Christian asks, we don't have to follow the law, wasn't that done away with when Christ died on the cross? And to that I would respond, did Christ ever preach that the law would be done away with? Did Christ ever tell someone that following the law would be a thing of the past? Did he ever urge anyone not to follow the law? If we're supposed to be like Christ and imitate Christ, wasn't Christ an avid follower and astute teacher of the law? Shouldn't we do the same if we're to be followers of Christ? The second question a Christian may ask is, as long as we repent of our sins, aren't we forgiven? To that I will respond, well, what is repentance of sins? For according to scripture, wouldn't it be turning from transgression of the law to obedience to the law? In Matthew 5.16, doesn't the Messiah tell us to let our light shine before men that they may see our good works, that they may glorify the Father? Doesn't the Messiah's brother Jacob who was called James, head of the Jerusalem church, tell us that by works a man is justified and not by faith only? And isn't grace only needed when there is a violation of the law? For if the law doesn't exist, then what is grace needed for? Wasn't grace needed for sin, which was transgression of the law? Doesn't grace only suit a purpose when one is trying to follow the law? And does the gift of grace relieve one's obligation to follow the law? If one is not following the law, aren't they sinning? Aren't they willfully, habitually sinning? But what does the Most High tell us to do? He tells us to follow the law. For sin is transgression of the law. Righteousness is following the law. And through his prophet, he says that sin leads to death, but repentance from sin unto righteousness, following the law, doing what is lawful and right, will lead to life. 
This is underscored by what the Messiah says in Matthew 19, 17, when he told the rich man, if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. This POV, POV number two, has gone over the principles of repentance and the law. I hope it has been edifying. If you should have any questions or thoughts, please leave in the comment box below. Also, don't forget to like the video and share. I hope this POV has been edifying. Till next time, peace, light, and shalom. I know what you're trying to do. I'm trying to free your mind, Nia, but I can only show you the door. You're the one that has to walk through it.